Um, okay, Janice gave me a whole list of things about her, and they're all wonderful. I'm not going to read them all. <laughs> because she was the best of the performers and gave me the most information, and I can't use it all. But the thing you need to know is last time, Janice talked about poop. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> And amazing, and I'm sorry you all missed the poop. Um, but she is also, let's see, she stage manages, she writes, she, oh my god, she does everything, and she's wonderful, and she's a great person, and she wrote an original full-length play called Butter Scent, and you should look for it this summer. Vague. Vague booking in person? Is that a thing? Maybe, maybe in May-ish. Maybe May. Maybe May. Oh, yeah. it's a little less vague. Formal announcement coming soon? Oh. Yeah. Oh. I'll, I'll talk to you in a minute. check every little last lock three times, and check the garage three times, we have to turn back around and go home and do it all over again. Amen. Amen. <laughs> I also have to unplug certain things, like the toaster and the can opener before I leave, because I'm going to back up a little bit. <laughs> okay. Because I'm afraid that I'm going to leave something plugged in, and there's going to be a house fire when I'm gone, and my pets are going to die. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. right? Yep. I'm also afraid of being robbed, whether I'm home or not. Someone's going to break in, and they're going to steal my shit, they're going to steal my pets, or they're going to kill my pets because I really don't have any shit to steal. <laughs> yeah. This is all going on up in here. Uh, going places alone scares me. Going someplace new is even worse. If we're going on vacation together and I've never been to that destination before, day one is going to suck for you. <laughs> I'm, I'm scared of getting cancer, I'm scared of my genetics, I'm scared that my lifestyle up until now is going to catch up one day with my heart, I'm afraid of death, and this is all just like a few little teeny tiny things, just cracking the surface. Um, not all of these, you know, millions of fears whether irrational or rational, which who decides if a fear is irrational, because to me it feels 100% real. <laughs> this is just a few things that, you know, keep you laying awake at night, that usually manifest into a panic attack, always at the worst possible times. Like, when you're on your way to a wedding or a birthday party, or you're driving. Who's ever had a fucking panic attack while driving? It is terrifying. <laughs> it is terrifying. It is terrifying. So, fear, or as the old saying goes, fuck everything and run, is a learned behavior. We take all these little things, and my fears are just a compilation of images and experiences and traumas that have kind of happened over 35 years. I'm 35, I don't fucking care, who knows? <laughs> we learn what to fear just like we learn what's good versus bad, what's acceptable versus taboo, but how do we know? Who kind of helps determine these things along the way? Well, 
our families, our parents, our siblings, our aunts, our uncles, our grandparents, our teachers, our neighbors, our friends, our coaches, our babysitters. It's a lot of exposure all at once, like movies, TV shows. You read a book and you throw it in the freezer because it's too scary, The Shining. <laughs> and I mean, it makes sense because my mother, who has always been terrified of spiders for whatever reason, probably because her mother was terrified of spiders and her mother was terrified of spiders. So if I see my mother freak out and go for the vacuum hose to vacuum up the spider, chances are, I'm going to be scared of spiders. And I'm going to think that they're ugly, disgusting little creatures that deserve to be swept up with a vacuum hose. They do not. They do not. <laughs> so, what do we do when we figure out that we're afraid of something? Maybe that fear is kind of ruining our lives, <laughs> running our lives, ever-present, little back of our mind just waiting to fucking jump out the worst time. We face our fears. <clears throat> All right, that's it. Uh, no. It's not that easy. It's not easy. I got it. I know. It's taken me years and years and years with help, with practice, crying, sobbing, throwing things, slamming doors, to just get over the few fears that I've gotten over thus far. So I split them into two categories because that's who I am as a person. We have uh, unconquered fears and conquered fears. That's the happy part. So if it is a fear that's conquered, I'll let you know and we'll celebrate and everyone can say conquered. Let me hear you say conquered. Conquered. Yes. <laughs> I also made flashcards because that's also who I am. It's got to be serious. My hair's going up. Oh. All right. So fear number one. All right, talk about it. Panophobia, and I wrote on the back. I don't care who knows. Oh, I know what you're thinking. Oh, her kids made her flashcards. I don't have kids. <laughs> <laughs> Panophobia, the fear of everything. Also, the fear that something bad will happen, and that's like every day. These are these are really the fears and phobias that run my everyday life, pretty much. Number two. Metathesiophobia, the fear of change. I fear every little change. I live my life on a schedule, and if that schedule is disturbed in any way, I unwind. It's not pretty. Nyctophobia, the fear of darkness. See, it's like on black paper. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, I'm going to share with the whole class. Nyctophobia, fear of darkness. This one is the most, I'm just going to leave this out because it's the most crippling fear I have. And there's a story about it later. You're just going to write that. Osteophobia. This is weird, but it's the fear of bones or skeletons and or skulls. I'm happy to say that this fear is conquered! Yeah. Yeah. Right nice. Alright, number five. Monophobia. The fear of being alone. Yeah, I know, it's really fucking sad. <laughs> Athazagoraphobia, the fear of being forgotten. And my fears are like, some of these are just narcissists. <laughs> Astrophobia, the fear of thunder and lightning. I drew a little lightning bolt and I colored it in because you guys deserve it. <laughs> this one is conquered. Thanatophobia, if you can't tell by the picture, it is the fear of death. This is a big one. Um, there's, got, there's a gravestone, if that's what you do. Or, and fancy little urn, which is, that's, that's how I'm going out. <laughs> and a fancy urn. Disposophobia. So, I like to say I'm a pack rat, but that's a fucking lie. I'm a hoarder. I come from a really long line of hoarders, and we like to think that we just are collectors. <laughs> We're pack rats, but... Um, really, so it's the fear of getting rid of things or throwing things away. Um, this is conquered, believe it or not! Yeah. Alright, gyroscopophobia, the fear of growing old. This is cursive if you can't. <laughs> Arachnophobia, a really popular fear, no thanks to like the movie and books and shit about spiders. Um, it's the fear of spiders. 
When I say con, you say Kurt. Con. Kurt. All right. And the last one, which will probably never be conquered, and I'm totally fine with that, is arithmophobia, the fear of birds, because birds are dinosaurs. Yeah. <laughs> Dinosaurs was like one of the few things I loved as a kid. It was like dinosaurs, the Titanic, ancient Egypt. Those were like the things I loved. Top of books with mummies. So birds are tiny, sometimes large dinosaurs. They've managed to live through everything. Um, I've been attacked by birds more times than I'm going to admit. Um, the most horrifying one was at the Porter County Fair in 1987. <laughs> We were going through the exotic bird exhibit, oh, no. which is a great idea. And who knew that ostriches could fit their head and necks through the cages and grab, and grab small, unsuspecting children and pull them up off the cage and start choking them. than I will ever be, if you can fucking believe that. <laughs> Starts just taking my shirt off. <laughs> the odd, where's the shirt's off? The ostrich, he just, he loses all interest and just fucking backs away. <laughs> so birds have some kind of weird, like, just thing with me. It's like my aura or like whatever wavelength I vibrate on. They're like, ah! <laughs> is basically just confronting them, right? You just said the done. So, arachnophobia, real quick. When your husband loves spiders, and he comes home one day, and he finds out that the pet spider that he's been keeping in your closet, like, alive, that you don't know about, accidentally got flushed down, like, the shower drain when you were taking a shower, and you're like, yeah, I flushed this spider down, and I killed him. And he comes home, and he's like, oh my god, you killed Henry? <laughs> There are baby spiders that live in his car. He leaves the sunroof open so they can like go out at night. <laughs> when he loves, when your when your partner and the person you love loves spiders so much, you let them coach you in a catch and release program of like no spider left behind. Right? Uh, let's see. Oh, this So I was brought to the realization that things were controlling my life. There were just, there was stuff everywhere, like exploding out of every drawer and every closet. So with the help of a supportive partner and lots of tears and crying about getting rid of things, I realized it's just fucking stuff. It's just things. Unless it's a family heirloom or something very important or, you know, a beautiful antique that I want to keep for the rest of my life or it's useful or whatever. I realized it's really just stuff. Like, I don't need it. And my life has gotten so much easier. It's ridiculous. Minimalist lifestyle, like, it, it works for me. So, um, the next one, astrophobia, lightning bolt. I have been in a lot of storms, like a lot of tornadoes, a lot of really like scary situations. I actually experienced my first tropical storm this summer. Yay. Yeah, Yay. it was really fucking terrifying. Uh -huh. Um, but when you have like little nieces and nephews in the garage with you at 4 a.m. in this like vacation rental on the beach and there's like water tornadoes coming out of the ocean and you're like trying to be brave for them like it's gonna be cool kids like party in the garage all the weather alerts are going off okay, a tropical storm. like you can't be scared about stuff like that so I started like when I was little I was like looking up things about thunder and lightning and watching the Discovery Channel watching the Weather Channel, and things get less scary when you know about them, you know? Like when you start using your brain and thinking like, oh, there's different types of lightning? That's cool! <laughs> so, knowledge is power. <laughs> okay, so the last, these kind of are twofold. So, osteophobia, conquered. Nyctophobia, not so much. So these gonna go together because I have five older brothers. I don't know if you heard me. I have five <laughs> older brothers. Oh. Yeah. yeah. I'm the youngest of seven. I have a sister who's also older. 
Um, and their main purpose in life, you know, is to bully and terrify their siblings. So two of them decided that it was much cooler instead of beating the crap out of each other to then gang up on me. And I've got to tell you, they were a great team. <laughs> And I still sleep with a nightlight. Yeah, it's true. It's true. I ask my husband. <laughs> um, so we had a skeleton mask growing up, and it wasn't always afraid of skeletons. It wasn't always afraid of skulls and the darkness. Um, it, not the band. <laughs> um, so we had this like skeleton mask when we were little, right? It's like this latex thing. It was very terrifying. It was very realistic. And it had this black velvet hood that went over the back of it. And it was scary. Um, they would chase me around with it when they realized how scared I was because I have five older brothers and they're monsters. <laughs> I love them now, but growing up was a nightmare. So they would chase me around, like the basement and everything, like wherever we played. And sometimes they would, you know, throw it at me and run upstairs, put it on the couch next to me, run upstairs, you know, and then I would have to, like, just like throw a blanket over it and run away. Because we paralyzed with fear. Like, what the hell do I do? There's no one to help me. There's no one to save me, right? And like, I was little. I was like five, six years old. And they're all older. So they decided to kick it up a notch one day. They, as a team, devised this plan where one would throw the mask at me while sitting on the couch when I least expected it. And then the other one would run up the stairs um, to the door to the basement door. Then the other one would just run up the stairs, turn off the lights, run up, and then door shut behind them. So these two jackasses are up against the basement door because it doesn't lock, with their legs up, like, on the wall. I've got pants on, it's fine. <laughs> on the wall, so I can't get out, right? So I'm feeling around the darkness, like, on the floor with my hands, and I have my eyes closed because the darkness behind my eyelids was way less scary than the darkness in that basement. I feel the carpet at the bottom of the stairs and I just take off. I take off and my head just against the door, just bang my head against the door. So I'm like, oh, there's a light in the stairwell. So I get on the ledge of the door and I'm like reaching, reaching. I'm like, oh my God, I can almost get it, I can almost get it. I can feel the light switch plate, but I can't get it to flick up because I'm too short, too tiny. So I'm screaming, I'm crying, I'm bust, like, busting this door down with my tiny little five-year-old, six-year-old hands. All of a sudden, the door flies open, it's my mom. My mom was the best. She is the best. She's still alive, don't worry, she didn't die. She's alive, she's fine. My, I love my mom. Um, she was always the one to put these jackasses in their place. They didn't listen to anybody but her and my dad. So, she... She sits me in her lap, and I'm just a mess of emotions, scared of the dark from this point on. She puts me in her lap, and she tells me the best mom advice ever. She says, skulls are not scary. She says, Janice, you have a skull. She taps my little forehead. Really? Yes. <laughs> she goes, I have a skull, and I tap her forehead. You do? Uh-huh. <laughs> she goes, your skull protects your brain. And I think, my mom is a fucking genius! <laughs> now, I love skulls. I can't get enough. Like, sugar skulls, skulls on fire, glitter skulls, skull scarves, earrings, rings. They're everywhere. Like, I can't get enough of them. I think skeletons are the coolest thing. Like, yeah. they're, I, like, just over the moon with something that terrified the shit out of me. Like, nightmares as a little kid. So, when it's all said and done, we have these things in our brain that just tell us to be afraid, right? These fucking fears. And some of them are easier to overcome than others. I'm sure by the time I die, whenever that is, I'm gonna have more to add to the list. Maybe a few of these will be gone by then. Like, who knows? Yeah, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> but it's all about taking whatever fear you have. And I mean, sometimes it takes years. It takes help. It really does. Sometimes you might need to say, hey, I need help with this. Can you help me? This, I can't let this ruin my life anymore. 
And you gotta just stand up and look those fucking fears in the face and just say, you're scared!